think you'll you'll get the audience you want. So. <laughs> All right, it's 4.05, so I suppose we should start. So it's a pleasure today to have Minjun Choi from KF, KFE, Korea Fusion Energy, which I automatically translate to NFRI, as probably everybody else does. And he's speaking to his, us from beautiful downtown Daejeon. And... Uh, I think his history is uh, his history is simple. Uh, he was an undergraduate and graduate at Postec, but was from early stages involved with the K Star program, where he was both a postdoc and now a researcher. And he's quite young, but has already achieved uh, early distinction by a number of prizes including the under 40 award of another acronym, AAPPSDPP, which I think most of you translate like me as the Kikuchi Society. And we have the man with us today. And Minjun, well, he started out in ECE, ECE imaging and diagnostics but moved more now into physics of instabilities and turbulence. And he's done interesting work on avalanches and the interaction of avalanches with shear flows and also on magnetic islands and magnetic island turbulence interaction where he just published an interesting recent review. And today he's going to tell us about characteristics of edge fluctuations and transport in elm suppressed plasmas with the RMP. So please. And as usual, we'll you know if you have a quick question, ask it, either unmute or raise your hand, and then we'll have longer discussion at the end. So please go ahead. Okay. Thank you for the very good introduction. Uh, Okay, I will start my talk. Actually, this I, I presented a very short, short version of this talk in the case test session of last uh, APS meeting, but uh, I could not attend the meeting live, and uh, uh, that was too short to deliver all the details. So I'm I'm very happy to give you this talk, long talk, uh, and I thank you, Professor Diamond, for giving me this opportunity. So. Okay, I also thank all my collaborators for their support. So, okay, this is a brief introduction and I will explain issues to be addressed in this talk. So the, as you may know, a uh, resonant mod perturbation field has been widely used to suppress edge localized mode in edge mode plasmas. You can see a series of papers for successful atom suppression or mitigations in these works. And uh, there have been uh, many researches to understand its mechanism and the consequences and the prediction model. And uh, in this talk, uh, I'd like to first uh, uh, discuss the mechanism about mechanism. So recently, or, or a few ten, 10 years ago, uh, the stochastic layer was suggested as a one possible mechanism of the RMPL and suppression, for example, from this work. Uh, the stochastic layer near the pedestal top could enhance the transport and that can limit the alum growth or pedestal growth. So after a, a series of uh, uh, early researches, recent, more recently uh, in this work, uh, uh, the two fluid simulation could reproduce the experimentally observed electron transport very successfully. And, uh, but uh, the identification of this stochastic layer, very, which is expected to be very narrow, is very challenging in the experiment. Although we have some, uh, there have been some reports on, on the, this correlation between the stochastic layer and RMP suppressions, uh, indirect uh, uh, inference. And uh, so I will, address this issue firstly. And uh, next I uh, will discuss about um, another important question, which is uh, how transport to the diverter changes with RMP field. 
And uh, there is some debate on the active plasma transport, whether it is a determinist cause, as shown in this work, or it can be a stochastic process, as shown in this work. So I will also discuss briefly about this work in the, this issue. Okay, first one, uh, the identification of stochastic layer. That there are, are some previous experimental observation on this subject. So RMP alum suppression, for example, RMP alum suppression was achieved when the resonant rational surface is close to the pedestal top. So here x, x axis is the difference, the distance between pedestal top uh, and the resonant rational surface. And you can see that LM frequency is reduced significantly or LM is suppressed when this difference is small. In other words, when the uh, resonance rational surface is close to the top. So this is a kind of correlation. Uh, and uh, in this work, uh, people also show that the temperature uh, contour, which is uh, shown in this color, in this in graph as a colors, different colors, you can see the temperature is flattened when the alum is suppressed. So localized temperature flattening near the pedestal top was observed during the alum suppression. And uh, I like to uh, ask on a, another way, if we have another way uh, to identify this stochastic layer beyond the limitation of this uh, profile diagnostics or simple correlations. So uh, I'd like to introduce one promin prominent characteristic of RMP alum suppression plasmas, that is the pl turbulent fluctuation, which means the broadband frequency or wave number spectrum, which shows this broadband spectrum is increased. Uh, as you can see in these works, for example, as in the shown in this work, uh, density fluctuation is significantly increased during the alum free phase by the RMP field. And also, as you, as you see in this work, a broadband fluctuation arise near the pedestal top. And also, as you can see in this work, the temperature fluctuation also shown to be increased uh, during the LM suppression, as you shown this red colors plot. And so uh, I think we can consider to uh, use the information of turbulence to identify the stochastic layer because there has been some researches that stochastic field can change the turbulence characteristics. For example, some numerical simulation and the theoretical recent theoretical analysis show that high K component become dominant with the field stochastication. And so for example, this work shows that when the field, RF field or H field, the regional field is applied, the turbulent structure is changed from here to here, that there, you can see that high K component becomes dominant with the field applications, field stochastications, penetrations. And also in the more recently, uh, uh, Professor Diamond and the Mingun Kao showed that turbulence can, high K turbulence can lock onto the stochastic field structures. So, so their, their behavior, turbulence behavior can be uh, related to the stochastic feel coupled to stochastic field, so become stochastic. And uh, there is also some experimental uh, result, which shows turbulence uh, characteristic changes with the RMP resonant field penetrations or stochasticizations. They, in, in the experiment, they used spectral analysis. For example, here, uh, this shows wave number spectrum uh, without, uh, field shown in black and the weed uh, field shown in the red. You can, this is a log plot, but they replot this in the linear scale with some normalization. And as you can see that a red plot with a field penetration uh, is much broader than the black plot. And which means that the correlation length, which is the inverse of this width, is much shorter with the field application, as you can see here. So the suppression of low K mode and the reduction of correlation length was observed in the experiment by the stochastic field, field stochasticizations. So maybe uh, analysis of this turbulence characteristic helped to identify a stochastic layer. 
So this is about the diagnostic I used and the analysis method. So we could measure the localized T fluctuations need near the pedestal top using the 2D electron cyclotron emission imaging diagnostic, ECI. And this is basically a uh, is similar to a camera uh, and uh, we can selectively measure the EC emission by, uh, by using the large imaging optics for the one-to-one -one matching for the vertical direction in the vertical direction. And, uh, and also we use the heterodyne detector array and the selectively measure the different EC frequency to resolve the radial uh, emissions, emissions in the radial direction. So, what we measure by this uh, uh, 2D ECI channels, uh, be, uh, what, what we measure by this ECI channel would be a kind of a special structures uh, of turbulence mode, and this will be recorded in time. So if we analyze, analyze this time series data recorded in ECI channels, we can identify some uh, information in the uh, information of the turbulence structures. And I used some spectral method per, first, and one of them is the cross pulse spectrum. To this is used to measure the fluctuation amplitude very accurately. Here, here cross means the we used two channels, uh, two different channel ECI channel separate separated in in real space. Uh, it is, it's, and the, but it is they, these two channels are are all, uh, within the uh, correlation length of the some mode, and by uh, calculating this uh, ensemble average of this Fourier transform of these two signals, uh, we could, we can sorry uh, we can extract the real uh, fluctuation amplitude. For example, this xt small xt is the time series data, and this 3t is the real fluctuation, and the nt is the noise component, and we can Fourier you can apply Fourier transform to obtain the, some, uh, some something like this, and this is uh, uh, amplitude of real signals, and uh, this is noise signals. And if we uh, calculate this, this, and then this will be simply can be written like this. And uh, if we take an ensemble average like this, then the, the first term would have a, a finite definite constant. Uh, phase difference due to the this uh, uh, this fact that the two channels are separated in the, in the space, but the, the, the all the other terms will include the noise random noise phase, so they will decay uh, in the average uh, only only this uh, real fluctuation term will remains finite for the large n, so we can extract the amplitude correctly. Uh, and another method I use is uh, frequency wave number power spectrum. And uh, this is often uh, used and often to extract uh, the, this information with a two point only. And uh, the idea is simple because we can measure this cross phase between two channels. And then we know that the local wave number can be simply, by, can, can be simply uh, given like this. So we can extract the local wave, num wave number information from cross phase between two channels. And the ECI diagnostic, 2D diagnostics allows to improve the signal to noise ratio by utilizing uh, multiple pairs of, uh, sorry, uh, touch screen <laughs> makes some problem, okay? So we can use some uh, multiple pairs and the multiple uh, ensemble average over this multiple pair will, will improve the signal to noise Signal, signal to noise ratio. So this is second analysis. And another analysis I used is the wavelet bicoherence. And the bicoherence is defined as a power at the frequency of three, some frequencies due to the coupling with the other frequencies. And the, this, this is represented by this red uh, uh, colored uh, part and uh, over the, the total power at the F3. So, this is uh, simply uh, the ratio of a coupled power to the uh, total power. And uh, it has been used uh, widely to measure the degree of uh, coupling between uh, three waves. Uh, and uh, 
in this work, we use the uh, MOLED wavelet transform to get a high temporal resolution as uh, introduced in this work. And uh, the another method I used in this work is the statistical method. And uh, this is uh, so-called uh, complex entropy analysis. And I, I will explain this, work, uh, this method in more detail in the next uh, a couple of slides. Firstly, uh, I'd like to explain the meaning of complexity and entropy used in this work. And uh, this is uh, information theoretic meaning. And the uh, meaning of entropy in the information theory is a uh, measure of missing information or unknown information. And it is called uh, Shannon entropy and given like this for a given uh, some probability distribution. So, and in this work, we use the normalized Shannon entropy, which is simply uh, S over S max, and S max is the maximum uh, Shannon entropy we can have for some uh, probability distribution. And this is given for the equi probability distribution. So all states are equi equi equally pro probable. So that means the we don't have a uh, we have a lot of lots of lots of missing information. And uh, the meaning of complexity or definition of complex is defined by the product of this equilibrium and the information. And it is suggested by this work. And here, this equilibrium means the distance from the equiprobable dis distribution. So this equiprobable distribution is uh, denoted as a PE here. And it's simply given by one over N in, the, in this large N is the number of a state. And uh, this can be uh, more easily understood with uh, some examples. And uh, we have some examples of simple systems, so not complex systems in the physics, which is which are a perfect crystal or ideal gas. These two systems are known as a simple, not complex systems. And uh, we can uh, consider the uh, information or this equilibrium of this uh, state. So the, 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 these systems, the perfect crystal would have a, a delta function like a probability distribution because its motion is well defined by a single state. So it would have a delta function like a probability distribution. So single state determined all, the, all its motion. So information we can, uh, missing information is very small. So it is already known well. And the uh, ideal gas on the other hand would have a uh, equally probable, equally probable distribution. So probably, probably something like this. So because it has a lot of degree of freedoms and uh, uh, it can have, it can be able differently and uh, most states can be, can have a equal, equally probable uh, prob uh, probability. So it, it's a missing information is very large. Uh, and uh, this equilibrium, for example, this, this data function like Rural distribution have a large dis disequilibrium because it is very different from uh, equally probable distribution. And uh, on the other hand, ideal gas would have a very small disequilibrium because it's a de determined, defined as a distance from uh, equally probable distribution. So to get the uh, small complexity for these two uh, known simple system, uh, he suggests that uh, he suggests to product these two terms. Uh, so like this, so, so it, this was shown to be useful to distinguish the complex and the simple systems. And, but the question is uh, what uh, state can we uh, define for this probability distribution and uh, how to measure this, this, this equilibrium. And uh, Rosso, Rosso suggested this following uh, probability distribution and uh, this equilibrium in this work. For example, uh, Rosso suggests uh, band pump probability dist distributions for probability distribution. And this band pump distribution is uh, explained in, uh, by example again. Uh, for example, if we have a time series data like this, 479 something, something, and then the first segment of size three will be 479. So this is first segment and its order, its order amplitude order can be represented by 
a state one, two, three, because it's simply increasing, right? And the third segment of this series data is nine, 10, six. <clears throat> and this order can be represented by three, one, two. In the, in, in, the, in the order and so it's a uh, order can be represented by state 312 so if we select the, the size 3 there can be uh, six states in in this uh, uh, six, six states or six states and uh, we can plot the distribution of this uh, probability distribution of this state for given data so this is how we uh, obtain the band the pump probability distribution for a given data so it's a simply a distribution of uh, orders of uh, consecutive segments of data. And uh, he uh, used the uh, Jensen-Shannon divergence, uh, so-called Jensen-Shannon divergence to measure the distance between this uh, band pump probability dis distribution of given data and the equally probable uh, distribution. So it is de defined like this. Here is uh, some normalization constant. And, uh, by uh, using these two concepts, these two uh, things, uh, he could show that uh, or determines the chaotic signal, a complex signal can be distinguished from stochastic or simple signal, as you can see here. You can plot uh, the, the data uh, on the, this CH plane. This H is a normalized Shannon entropy or the information. And this C is the Jensen Shannon complexities defined using this. And you can see that the, the, the chaotic signal, such as the logistic map, will re reside on this upper part of this uh, area. And he distinguished these two regions, the chaotic and the stochastic regions, using the so called so well known the stochastic model, such as. Uh, fractional Brownian motion or fractional Gaussian node. So there are also, please refer to this paper for more details and uh, for more, uh, uh, for, for more, uh, uh, for more uh, verification of this method using the well-known signals models. And so following this work, we, suggest to use the rescaled complexity to quantify the degree of complexity or stochasticity. Here, rescaled, rescaled complexity is that it is to use the, uh, this method more conveniently. For example, I rescale this complex value to be uh, one uh, under this maximum complexity line and zero under this uh, uh, boundary and uh, minus one for this uh, minimum complexity line. So I just uh, rescale this, this value with, with these three lines. And uh, the less uh, scaled complexity means that the signal is uh, less complex or more stochastic, or it is more close to the minimum boundary or this. Uh, okay, so do you have any question here? Uh, I, I hope you understand this, but uh, uh, if you don't understand clearly, please refer to this paper or uh, these papers, and uh, let me ask, uh, please ask your question later. So, okay. Let me ask a question now that's on my mind. I mean, okay. uh, have you, uh, I mean, how would you translate the complexity into properties of the probability distribution function? Right. In other words, you, you could imagine if you had good enough diagnostics of whatever mm -hmm. you're trying to measure, you could, I mean, you can come up with a PDF, mm -hmm. right? And the PDF is, I think, more interesting than a, than a time series, okay? Mm -hmm. So it would seem to say a complex PDF obviously would be one that differs significantly from equipartition which would yeah. be flat, right? But yeah. I mean, can you say more than that? I mean, uh, can you uh, say something about the structure of the PDF? Structure, so um, so they, they use uh, this, uh, oh, where, where's my pointer? Okay, they use this uh, uh, 
Jensen Shannon divergence to measure distance between uh, probability distributions. So they measure distance between a PB, uh, BP probability distribution of given data and the equally probable uh, distribution. So they think that uh, this uh, distance can uh, provide you the disequilibrium and uh, the complexity is defined by this uh, simple equations. So uh, structure. Uh, well, I mean, so let me, something you might think of, for example, does a PDF with heavy tails, okay. does that automatically have higher complexity, for mm -hmm. example? Mm -hmm. So we, 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 can, we can measure the distance between that high tail, uh, long, long tail uh, distribution and the equiprobable uh, distribution by using this jensen shannon divergence. So this gives you distance and uh, we multiply that distance uh, with uh, this entropy mm. of the given probability distribution. And that is the definition of complexities and, and uh, suggested in this work. So it's not easy to, uh, it's not easy to estimate complexity only with the shape of the distribution. I think we have to calculate the, these, these parameters. So, but, 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 but it's, uh, as you said, it's, it's basically the, the, the structure, the complex, the high complexity structure will have a more uh, delta function like a structure. Uh, well, not, not delta function like this is a more long tail structures. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. Okay, okay, let's move on first. Uh, okay, so this is the brief introduction of RMP alum suppression discharge in case star, and we applied n equal one RMP to suppress H localized mode. And based on the, some criteria introduced in this paper, and uh, here the red, red line is the RMP field strength, external coil strength. And uh, this, this blank line is DR plus signals. You can see that LM is mitigated first and uh, eventually suppressed with a larger amplitude, external amplitude. And uh, you can see that density uh, and the temperature changes. And uh, we analyze the rescaled complexity of T fluctuation near the pedestal top. Here, for, I first showed you here, the normalized uh, temperature fluctuation amplitude in the red, you can see that this normalized fluctuation amplitude increased significantly after the suppression transition. And it has a broad wave number range, I will show you later. And uh, it's larger than internal period level, as you can see. So fluctuation amplitude itself is, is increased significantly to the LM, in the LM suppression phase. And we calculate this uh, band pump uh, probability distribution over this time series data, temperature fluctuation. And uh, we also calculate this rescaled complexities. And uh, these are parameters I used in this calculation. I select the time step between points as a two microsecond, because this is the minimum uh, time step we can uh, have uh, in our system. And uh, we select the uh, the size of each segment is a five point. So we uh, take a five, five point, five uh, serial point to, uh, to determine it, to check its order and uh, plot the distribution of these orders. And uh, these five points would be 10, would, would, be cor would correspond to the 10 microsecond in time space. So we selectively uh, actually uh, this analysis would be selectively uh, sensitive to the structure of uh, 100 uh, kilohertz. And uh, also it can be uh, sensitive to the a few tens of uh, kilohertz, but this is more sensitive to the uh, uh, high frequency component because we only uh, analyze five points here. And uh, this is determined by considering the uh, ECI and channel size and the uh, velocity of uh, uh, usual uh, mode structures in the, in, in the 
uh, cadastral top, which is kilometer per second, and the size is about centimeter. So we analyzed the uh, uh, 2,500 segment to obtain a single the distribution of orders. And uh, so this is correspond to about five millisecond. Hmm. So this measurement resolution is about five millisecond. Okay, so this is the result. So as you can see here, the, the rescaled complexity decreased uh, uh, significantly with the LM suppression transition and the reduced the complexity means that T fluctuation becomes less complex or more stochastic. So we may ask if this result is due to the stochastic field or other effect. So we did some comparisons. So for example, we compare this uh, result with the result of a natural LM free case. A natural LM free phase is obtained uh, in this, uh, uh, like, okay, in, in this plasma. For example, this is the upper line. And the, somehow we obtain the uh, significant period of LM suppression without any uh, external perturbation. And uh, this, this is temperature, and uh, this is a normalized temperature fluctuation amplitude. You can see that temperature fluctuation is, appears and this wave number and the frequency space, it, this, this would have broadband structures. As you can see here, this wave number and the frequency space, sorry. And we analyzed the rescaled complexities, which is shown as a color in this plot in the radial and the temporal, temporal space. So this is time and this is a, measurement location, radio location, and this is around the pedestal top in this plasma. And uh, you, as you can see here, when we have a strong uh, turbulence, broadband turbulence in the natural and free phase, we observe increase of uh, this rescaled complexity. So the turbulence uh, without RMP field develops to have a complex T pattern rather than to be a stochastic. So this is very different from a uh, RMP LM suppression case where the rescaled complex decreased with the increased fluctuations. So, and uh, another uh, comparison is, is a comparison with the uh, spectral analysis. As I explained briefly, the reduction of correlation lengths by the stochastic field was observed in, in this work using this method, two-point method. And uh, as I will repeat the exp explanation. So, this red line is the with external perturbation field, and the blank line is without perturbation field, and the reduced reduce the correlation lengths or increase the spectral width in the wave number space is observed with a st strong stochastic field. But there is some caution in the spectral analysis because uh, this spectral width can be affected by a number of factors. And of course, the type of fluctuation or micro instability assumed to, is, should be assumed to be same, to not change it for this comparison to, 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 to uh, uh, attribute this change as a result of uh, this reduction of correlation length. So, and uh, I try to apply this analysis for the, this uh, turbulence mitigation and suppression phases, but they have a very different uh, spectral uh, wave number uh, spectrum, and it's not easy to uh, uh, guarantee that type of micro instability is not changed. So I choose another uh, discharges, another cases. This is the case I analyzed. I, I found the two different LM suppression phases with an equal RMP field in a single discharge, phase A here and phase B. They both are LM suppressed, LM crash suppressed uh, discharges. And this is external field applied, red line. And uh, I calculate the rescale complexity of a pedest near the pedestal time region. And you can see that the uh, rescale complexity is, is decreased it's in the phase A, LM suppression, but it's not clearly shown, change is not clearly shown for the phase B, LM suppression. And the phase A, so we uh, uh, please ignore the LM crash period. I should exclude this LM crash phases, but uh, it was uh, included. So I uh, 
calculate the wave number and frequency spectrum of these two phases here you can see that they in the phase a you can see the low frequency component and also high frequency component and but in the phase phase b you could see some significant high frequency component here but it has a weak uh, low frequency component so and uh, because this scaled complex analysis is more sensitive to the higher frequency i analyzed this uh, spectral with comparison in the high frequency uh, and this is the result. Here, I calculate the uh, local wave number over different in, in for the different frequency by using this uh, wave no wave numbers uh, frequency spectrum as a kind of a, a probability distribution. So I can just simply take the first moment for the estimation of a local wave number, and this local wave number is, is plotted in the blank line or black dotted line for the phase B black borderline for the phase A. And also I calculate uh, this uh, uh, sigma k uh, uh, standard deviation uh, by using the second moment of this, this uh, wave number spectrum, wave number frequency spectrum. And, uh, and this measurement actually is uh, affected by uh, noise uh, contribution. So if we see the high, very high frequency uh, result where the, there is no significant fluctuation, then the, you, you would have a very uh, uh, uncertainty, large uncertainty, which arises from uh, noise contribution. So we have to only uh, carefully, uh, uh, you can only uh, uh, measure the real uh, contribution, uh, real um, width for the significant fluctuation range, for example, around 40 kilohertz here. So both phase has a significant fluctuation near the 40 kilohertz. And the result near the 40 kilohertz shows that in the phase A, this width is larger than this phase B. So larger spectral width means a smaller correlation length. And this smaller correlation length is consistent with the lower complexity value if we consider that the strong stochastic field is the origin of these two phenomena. So that is, cons and that is consistent. But, so, but uh, as I said before, this spectral analysis may contain some uh, other contribution from the uh, instrumental noise or, or a possibility that the type of micro instability is changed, although they show very similar uh, dispersion in this plot so it's not uh, okay so and the uh, and the uh, this mass spectral analysis has some disorder advantage that they need a, a couple of uh, uh, many many pairs of channels to obtain a single result so their uh, spatial resolution is not very good on the other hand the rescale complexity can be calculated point by point. So, I mean, the, every single channel can give you some information. So this advantage is more clearly shown in this uh, profile measurement. For example, I could uh, obtain a, a radio scaled complexity profile using uh, many channels in 2D space, for example, here. Shown here, uh, I, I projected this, uh, measurement of uh, 2D channels onto the uh, uh, plasma middle plane to obtain the very high resolution radio profiles of this profile of rescaled complexity. And as you can see that they reduced locally near the pedestal top for the alum suppression phase, which is shown as a uh, red uh, squares. And you can see there is no changes between uh, H mode without RMP and uh, error mitigation with the RMP case. So at the pedestal top, uh, there is no uh, significant change for the mitigation phase. And uh, this uh, RC, uh, RC or rescaled complex reduction shows good correlation with the field penetration event shown in the temperature drops. For example, this is the uh, time evolution of this width of reduction in the profile. 
the width, this width, and uh, this is the analysis result for the, the first discharge I showed you. And the RMP field was turned on in this time. And uh, when the RMP field was turned on initially, we could see a temperature drop event. And also we could see that the rescaled complexity is reduced near the pedestal top, top for a short moment, but it, it is, uh, it is it, it is recovered plasma is recovered the temperature is recovered uh, and during this LM mitigation phase and we could not see any change in the uh, discrete complexities for this phase so I guess that field is uh, screened again in this phase and then uh, during the uh, in the transition to the LM suppression we could see again that this uh, discrete complex profile is reduced locally near the pedestal top and we, we could measure this width and as you can see here, and this width is uh, sustained, uh, final width is sustained for the, for the LM suppression phase in this discharge. So we, we, we suggest that this width of rescaled complex reduction may reflect the effective stochastic layer width at the pedestal top, and this sudden onset of the effective stochastic layer near the pedestal top with the LM mitigation suppression transition is not inconsistent, inconsistent with the recent TMO simulation. So I will discuss more in the later after summary. Okay, uh, and for now, next move to the uh, another analysis result. So I also an analyzed Y coherence of this T fluctuation near the pedestal top. Again, uh, this is the uh, result for the same discharge and the temperature amplitude is increased and the scale complex decreased. And the same time, at the same time, uh, we analyzed the bicoherence uh, of T fluctuation, and we found that bicoherence of the T fluctuation increased with the transition to the LM suppression, uh, which might imply some nonlinear uh, coupling between multi, multi uh, frequency uh, three waves. And uh, it, may, it may seem a little bit contradictory because this uh, uh, definite coupling would mean the uh, structure becomes more complex, but what we observed in the, uh, from the rescaled complex analysis that temperature fluctuation is less complex or more stochastic with RMP field application. Uh, but uh, we have to note that they are distinguished in the rear and the frequency space. So here I show you the 2D structures of a bicoherence of a rescaled complex change from mitigation to suppression by coherence increased near the pedestal top and the rescale complex decreased near the pedestal top. And their 2D structure are very different. Please note that upper channels are support from, uh, upper channels suffer from more noises. So we compare the channels near the middle plane. You can see that the drop of a uh, reduction of complexity uh, is more uh, observed in, uh, in the two channel, at least the two channel, while the by coherence increase is localized for the single channel here. So we can uh, think that the, their special size is different. And also we found that more, uh, we found that the by coherence exists in the low frequency, as you can see here, for example, and the RC analysis is more sensitive to the higher frequency fluctuation. I explained before that because, because we selected only five point or 10 microseconds to, uh, to calculate the, this probability distribution and the rescaled complexity. So this is the rescaled complex change with only uh, signals of uh, 25 to 10, 100 kilohertz fluctuation. And this structure is more, more or less similar to the raw data analysis. So most uh, structures, uh, most, uh, contribution comes from the high frequency component while the bicoherence exists in the low frequencies. So this analysis, these analysis uh, suggest that uh, we can explain uh, this somewhat uh, seemingly contradictory result with a, a partially stochastic analysis, partially stochastic island at the pedestal top. So this is our interpretation for the uh, these two analysis result. For example, firstly, uh, row K and row F, row frequency nonlinear coupling between the magnetic island and fluctuation could uh, result in the bicoherence increase. 
And this nonlinear resonance condition for the drip to wave emission might be satisfied in the RMP alum suppression. I mean that in this work, they show that uh, Martin Island, which has a, a few uh, iron uh, Ramo radius and the uh, island rotation frequency in this range can uh, emit a drift to wave. And uh, this would uh, imply the nonlinear coupling between island and the rho k and the rho frequency component. And that's, this can explain the bicoherence increase. And the existence of a high K surface field around the island can change further the fluctuation characteristic. And uh, uh, this was motivated by this recent work by uh, Mingu Kao and the Professor Diamond. And uh, they show that the high K fluctuation can arise from the coupling between uh, rho K island and the high K surface field and a rho k, uh, rho k uh, fluctuation and the high k surface field. So, so this would explain the decrease of rescale complexities in the high frequency component. And okay, so they also found that turbulence, high k turbulence can lock onto the stochastic field, high k stochastic field. So their behavior would be more stochastic as we observed in the rescale complex analysis. So, okay, so this is about the uh, uh, fluctuation, T fluctuation analy analysis near the pedestal top. So let's move to the uh, far edge fluctuation or transport analysis. So there are some previous researches on the uh, characteristics of a far edge fluctuation or transport. And the, in the L mode plasma, far edge fluctuation was found to be chaotic based on the same CHC complex entropy analysis in, this, in these works. And they found that phi H data are well fitted by this Lorentzian shaped forces, as you can see here. And they are on the chaotic uh, region of the CH plane, as you can see here, this is phi H point uh, reside in the chaotic area. And uh, they, use the extra, they use the GPI data for, uh, for, uh, for example, and uh, uh, our question is how does it change with RMP field? And uh, there was uh, some hint from this work. Uh, they show that random, randomly distributed Lorentzian forces result in a stochastic signal. So maybe uh, the, the signal would be more stochastic with RMP field and uh, it is actually uh, shown in our work. We uh, used the Rangmuir proof uh, diagnostic to measure particle flux uh, near the diverter, and the Rangmuir proof diagnostic can measure uh, ion saturation current fluctuation, and it depends on the electron particle flux. And uh, this particle flux, uh, quasi particle flux, was obtained uh, and analyzed across the diverter striking point as the plasma drift across the a single proof. So this is the plasma. This is illustration. So we have a Langmuir proof here on the diverter, and the plasma striking point is, is plasma is drifted across the, some uh, single Langmuir proof, uh, and uh, we uh, could take the profiles of uh, particle flux across this Langmuir proof data, or Langmuir proof position, and we define the distance by the distance between striking point flux surface and the Rangmuir proves flux surface. So uh, positive, positive uh, distance means the, uh, we measure the, the sole region and the negative distance means that we measure the private region here, shown here. And the parameters were used to, used to calculate this uh, quantities is like this. At the time step, we use this one microsecond and the size of which segment is uh, use is set to be five and this is based on the uh, based this is used to capture a show first here for example this show first so, so selecting the good parameters are very important to obtain a good uh, meaningful result so this is the result so this is the rescaled complex profile of a particle flux with the different RMP field conditions uh, here, the black uh, lines is the uh, rescaled complexity profile of a particle flux across the distance and uh, across the striking point, which would be around the 
uh, zero here. And uh, in the H mode phase without uh, RMP field shows in, chosen in black and the uh, element mitigation phase shown in blue and the suppression phase case shown in red. And uh, they have a, some common feature that they has a very fast drop and a slower recovery. And uh, we interpret this uh, change is uh, due to the transition from uh, uh, private zone to the sole region. And uh, we think that this minimum point correspond to the striking point position. And, and the, they, they slightly deviate from zero, but uh, we think that there is some error, absolute error in the measurement of uh, distance due to the uncertainty in the equilibrium. So we just uh, uh, compare the minimum values and we found that although they are all chaotic, so I mean that this scale complex is larger than zero, so they are in the chaotic area, but their uh, minimum value is decreasing uh, with the uh, larger RMP field penetrations or applications. So, so this is a preliminary uh, conclusion, but uh, in contrast to the pedestal top response, which shows a sudden response to the LM suppression transition. This uh, shows you, uh, this uh, particle, far edge particle flux shows you more linear response to the applied energy field strengths. And uh, this uh, observation, the, the very low uh, rescaled complexity with our, during the LM suppression suggests that a stochastic model may be necessary to describe the particle flux with a strong energy field. And uh, this is the, some uh, result from the recent uh, RMP field scan, uh, fine scan experiment in the, conducted in the previous campaign. So uh, here, different color correspond to the different RMP field uh, strengths, external uh, strengths. And we found that the rescaled complexity decreased uh, with the increasing RMP field uh, in an overall, but uh, we have to be careful that this uh, result was uh, obtained, uh, the particle flux data was obtained by with, with a too low sampling rate. So it cannot be uh, taken seriously, but uh, anyway, we could see some uh, 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 trend and uh, maybe you can uh, have a more, data, more better data with a, a correct sampling rate in the next campaign. So, okay, this is the uh, brief summary of uh, my talk today. So we analyzed the characteristics of plasma turbulence and transport with RMP field, under RMP field. And uh, beside the conventional spectral analysis, we introduced the statistical analysis known as a complexity and entropy analysis to identify or distinguish a state of plasma turbulence or transport and to improve understanding of state. And the main result of our analysis is that the CH analysis, the complexity and entropy analysis shows that both pedestal top T fluctuation and the particle flux at the diabotal starting point become less complex or more stochastic with RMP field. And the response of the former seems to be the more nonlinear. And the turbulence dynamics with the RMP field is suggested based on the CH analysis and the bicoherence analysis as follows. The low K island onset at the pedestal top first, and then this low K island drives low K turbulence nonlinearly, according to this paper. And then uh, high K turbulence can be generated by the stochastic island, high K stochastic island, with, with the coupling to the low K uh, turbulence, and, and suggested by this work. So this is the turbulence dynamics we. Uh, uh, suggest for the RMP field applications penetration. And uh, there is some discussion. I prepared some discussion on the RMP LM suppression mechanisms. And uh, for example, the TM1 simulation, oh, I, I omitted the uh, reference here. The, uh, the recent TM1 simulation suggests that the one set of stochastic layer at the pedestal top is, is, is responsible for the RMP LM suppression. And uh, uh, based on our uh, our results shows that it is not inconsistent with uh, this simulation. Our analysis also shows that the sudden onset of a uh, uh, reduction of a uh, scaled complexity with the LM suppression transition 
And uh, another interesting thing to note is that uh, TM1 expect to have uh, uh, this uh, uh, diamatic uh, frequency near the zero uh, for the field penetration, but uh, this really experiment shows that non-zero uh, diamatic frequency and uh, zero, nearly zero electric uh, frequency, drift to frequency for the LM suppression. So, and it actually, it is interesting to note that this nonlinear resonance condition between RLM and drift, RLM and drift waves could be satisfied at the LM suppression based on this disreed result. And the estimate RLM width given here. I mean that this condition is should be satisfied for the uh, nonlinear resonance between island and drift wave, and this condition may be satisfied for the this uh, observation from the district experiment. And uh, this condition, which is also necessary for this nonlinear resonance, can be maybe uh, satisfied based on our uh, estimation of this uh, reduction uh, based on the uh, scared scared complexity reduction. So island width is approximately about half of this uh, uh, reduction width, and uh, this would be around a few uh, iron rubber width. And so based on this uh, uh, analysis, we may consider that nonlinear tolerance drive after the field penetration is it may be important for the LM suppression. So, okay, and uh, another thing is, is not to note this, that uh, there could be more than one way to the LM stable pedestal. Here, a uh, previous mechanism, the stochastic layer at the pedestal is consistent with the phase A shown here, as I explained before. But uh, in the phase B, we found that it has a low, very, uh, very low, uh, top, low K turbulence, weak low K turbulence with an insignificant phi current. So there might be no RND resonance, nonlinear resonance in the phase B. And uh, there's no clear reduction of uh, the scaled complexity of the high frequency high K turbulence in the phase B. So the previous mechanism may not be consistent with the phase B, but we still uh, obtain the LM suppression. So there might be another way to reach the LM stable pedestal, but uh, we don't know yet. Probably the phi to transport is very different in the phase B, but unfortunately we could not <clears throat> observe the striking point measurement clearly in this discharge. Maybe we need a more experiment to uh, confirm this, uh, uh, check check this idea. Okay, so this is all. I, this is all I have uh, for now, and thank you for listening. Uh, and this is acknowledgement, and I appreciate helpful discussion with Mingong Kao and the, uh, Professor Diamond in the last APWG meeting and afterward. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you very much, Minjun, for an exceedingly interesting talk. So questions, ladies and gentlemen, I suspect they'll be, ah, we're getting, what a surprise, we get some customers quickly. Lothar, please go ahead. When you compare the, uh, the unmitigated and the unsuppressed case, um, did you look at differences in the, in the plasma response? I mean, it's of course a limitation that we don't have good nonlinear MHD codes that can really um, bridge the uh, plasma response calculations across a large range of, of uh, RMP amplitudes or RMP field strength. But um, it struck me that maybe the, the difference in localization that you saw of this reduction uh, feature could also have mm -hmm. to do simply with a different plasma response. Yeah, you, you just had the slide up for a moment there. Um, I, I was talking about the spatial. Spatial. The spatial localization. Huh? You saw this, you saw this, this was a blue and red curve that was yeah. compared to the, uh, no, uh, in, yeah, okay, fine, we, we, yeah. So there, there could also be significant differences in the plasma response between these two cases, right? Because you you step up the RMP field strength, it's not a it's not a yeah, it's, linear it's, ramp, I suppose, right? Well, uh, it, it was RMP field first applied here and step up, and uh, it was increased linearly for afterward mm -hmm. here, and we could not uh, see any uh, change of rescaled complexity for the mitigation phase. And uh, I, I, I agree that 
the plasma response would have been nonlinear. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we first uh, found that the mitigation phase and then suppression phase at the beyond some uh, threshold value. And uh, so that reflects the nonlinearity of a uh, period of response. And that is actually quite well captured in the, this uh, sudden decrease of uh, scaled complexity here, I think. What, what was your question exactly? So you had, you had another slide that showed these two um, uh, different well locations for the mitigated and the uh, arm suppressed phase. It was a different slide. Which is slide? Uh, this, one? this one? No, it was earlier, I believe. We can talk. There's there's okay. there's many other questions. We can we can talk separately later. Okay. No, I don't see it right now. But what you what you're saying is that during the elm, yeah, it, you had it up for a moment, right? Yeah, one one more. No more. This one, yeah. Uh -huh. Ah, this one. This one is about the uh, part diverter particle flux uh, analysis. So this rescaled complexity is uh, calculated using diverter particle particle flux near the uh, across the striking point on the diverter. Uh, so across the yes. striking point. Mm -hmm. so, but these differences could be related. What, what you're saying is that the, the uh, field strength, the RMP field strength still increases. It's not constant during the mitigation phase. Is that correct? It still increases? Uh, for, for this measurement? Uh -huh. For this measurement, uh, RMP field is more, for each measurement, RMP field uh, strength is more or less fixed. For mm -hmm. example, there's no RMP field for the black line here. This is H mode without RMP field. And mm -hmm. this is uh, for the weak penetration of, or uh, insignificant penetration uh, phase. And the field was more or less constant for this uh, measurement. And also this is, yeah. So for each measurement, we uh, take the data for a more or less uh, stationary Period. Yeah. So, well, I mean, we, we have seen similar features that, for example, the ER well can move in and then out. Um, so that, uh, in other words, behaves nonlinear, nonlinearly versus perturbation strengths. So, and I, I, mm -hmm. I think there could be several reasons for that, not just the change uh -huh. in, in complexity. They could be just related to the plasma response shape itself. Uh -huh. That was this my is point. just con my conjecture that I think that uh, this uh, far edge uh, transport and or far edge characteristic or far edge response seems to be more or less more linear compared to the pedestal response because uh, you can see a sequential sequential change from H mm -hmm. mode to the mitigation to the suppression. You can see sequential changes, or you can see also this. It's, it's, it's a, a little. A little uh, controversial, but anyway, you can see more or less linear uh, behavior here for the five edge transport, but mm -hmm. uh, we have a very uh, sudden uh, changes, as you can see here. So we think that the pedestal top response is very nonlinear, probably mm -hmm. due to plasma response, but the, this, this five edge data may be more just uh, similar to the uh, linear response. So like a vacuum response, oh, I don't know. Okay, thanks. Okay. Yeah. All right, we have quite a lineup. Next is Gyeongjin. Okay, I have a question on some basics. So uh, could you explain what's the difference between between the chaotic and the stochastic? Okay. Uh, <laughs> chaotic, uh, here, um, here, here, chaotic means the uh, uh, you, you can you can uh, consider uh, the coupled pendulum or some coupled uh, uh, structures. As, so here the coating means the uh, we it is a system by a system of deterministic uh, causes. So the 
maybe maybe coupled pendulum is a, a good example for the chaotic uh, signals. So their uh, motion is coupled, but we although we know uh, its motion. So it's hard, it's hard to say in English. <laughs> uh, so, so you mean chaotic is deterministic and stochastic yeah. is intrinsically random? No, not, not, not random. I mean, uh, their motion is well defined, well described by a deterministic equation, but their motion is coupled, strongly coupled. And so their behavior there uh, is very sensitive to the initial condition. So we call that kind of a, a motion chaotic uh, and the, the one example is logistic map so if you have a, a little difference in the initial condition you would end up very different uh, behavior later uh, even, even though we know all the uh, uh, motion very clear uh, equation is very clear but uh, this motion is very complex and the stochastic so here means the more like a random Random. You can consider it random. Uh, uh. So, so oh, that, 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 like, oh, like a yeah, Brownian okay, okay. motion. So here, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. this 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 means the, uh, this uh, uh, scale complexity means the or uh, mm -hmm. this can be uh, distance to the or, or closeness to the uh, fraction of Brownian motion. So uh, zero scale complexity means the the, this behavior is very close to the Brownian motion. So mm -hmm. it's uh, simple in some sense. <laughs> well, let me, let, let me burst in here with a comment and I, I'm at the end of the line and we'll come back to this, but for Gyeongjin's benefit, chaos, signature of chaos is a positive Lyapunov exponent. It's exponential yeah. divergence of orbits while for, for do, stochastic the problem is we use the word stochastic for magnetic fields by the way that are really chaotic but that's a that's the later <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's one of my questions well okay. i mean Thank i you. think that's what i thought yeah, i was curious it. about the terminology the use so of the word stochastic word. means a noisy or diffusion process so it's algebraic separation yes, right? yes. that that's a simple way to look at it yeah, and also the stochastic magnetic field is basically, it is overlap multiple islands. So in some sense, it's deterministic. So far from intrinsically. Not random. in some sense, it is deterministic and it yes, has yes. exponential mm -hmm. divergence, right? I yes, mean, yes. back to the, the taylor Chirikov map. So, so as I was confused uh, and I was thinking that maybe the word is mixed in some sense. Well, we'll come back to that later. Okay. But let, next. Yeah, there are many other uh, people who want questions. So. Maybe I can stop here. Yeah, we can. You can get online again. So, okay. uh, uh, Ida San, please go ahead. Oh, very interesting uh, uh, presentation. Um, the stochastication is uh, also the my uh, favorite uh, topics, and that is very uh, rich uh, physics. And I have many uh, uh, experiments of the heat pulse propagation in the, in the stochastic layer, and when the magnetic field becomes stochastic we see a very first uh, heat pulse of propagation. And that is much faster than the nested flux surface. Uh -huh. And I'm wondering, uh, did you have any chance to see a propagation of a turbulence mm -hmm. on the stochastic layer? In other words, uh, the turbulence the radial propagation, the speed become faster when the magnetic field is stochastic so the, I would like to uh, know your comment, the impact of stochastication on the speed of heat pulse and turbulence uh, propagation. Okay, uh, we actually uh, attempt to apply some uh, uh, ECRH modulation uh, in this actually experiment to see how this heat pulse propagation or possibly turbulence propagation changes with a different RNP field. Mm -hmm. But I, I could not uh, analyze data yet detail, in detail, but uh, problem is that this uh, uh, expected width, width, width of this stochastic uh, region is very narrow uh, in a, 
pedestal top for the uh. Tokoma plasmas. And uh, it would not be easy to analyze its propagation for this short, a very narrow reason. But I think it would be more important for the uh, accelerator uh, LHD plasma where the socket region can be very broad. And I, I, I remember some uh, work by uh, Dr. Kobayashi uh, on the LHD, who shows the, some propagation of uh, turbulence. And I hope to see more analysis coming from uh, those experiments. Yeah. OK, thank Thanks you. For, just, thank a small, for, just a small for comment the in, the, in the case that you may try to the heat power propagation using SOTUS crash. Yeah. So this is also the good heat pulse propagation and uh, right. could be a, a large amplitude compared with the modulation of ECH. So right. you may try to the analysis the so this uh, discharge. Right, right. Thank you. Yep, thank you very much. Okay, next oh next customer, uh, Dr. Who. Okay, thanks. Uh thanks for a very interesting talk. Uh, since you mentioned uh, some of our uh, TM1 simulation results, actually, I want to clarify that. Uh, for the penetration uh, condition, for example, we find the omega star E should be zero, but from the experiment, it shows omega E cross B is zero. Uh -huh. I think the inconsistency or, or that difference is that, you know, you may find in both my paper and also Carlos' paper, Discuss that uh, for the experiment, actually, it's very hard to determine the exact uh, um, omega star because the reason is that uh, the um, special resolution of the diagnostic isn't enough, you know, to cover mm -hmm. the island structure. So it's very hard mm -hmm. to determine uh, the de the detailed omega star e after the M expression. Um, so I have two questions uh, according to your presentation. The first one is. Could you explain what's the difference um, between like the stochastic field or the magnetic islands? Because from our simulation, actually we find there is just a one island chain at the pedestal top. So uh -huh. there's no uh, stochastic layer. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, for firstly, uh, our interpretation is that <clears throat> low K island structures would drive a low frequency and low K uh, turbulence by nonlinear couple resonance. Oh, where, where is it? My pointer? Can, can you see my pointer? Okay. Can you see my pointer now? Yeah. So we think that the uh, bicoherence increase is, is, is responsible, is, is uh, related to the low K island structures. And uh, uh, it's uh, RC, uh, rescaled complexity decrease is related to the stochastic field around the island. So, I think that these two measures are related to the island and the stochastic field around the island, uh, respectively, and the low K and the higher K, relatively. OK. OK, so, um... so if, if we want to extract the information on the island structure, I think uh, it, would be, it would be better to, uh, uh, based on the uh, Bicoherence increase. So you can see a uh, narrow increase picked by single channel, nearly single channel here into this space. So I, I think I uh, conjecture that this is the uh, island structures. And uh, around that, stochastic field uh, would affect the, this rescaled complexity measure. OK. Okay, thanks. My, my, my second question is that, uh, according to your uh, nonlinear simulation, usually, you know, due to the feed penetration and the, uh, the tide scale of the island growth, actually, I think, uh, you know, the, the increase of the fluctuation may be even several milliseconds earlier than the uh, transition to M expression. I'm not uh -huh. sure if you also observe such kind of... Uh, yeah, several milliseconds or even like around five milliseconds earlier than M expression. Well, millisecond is very uh, difficult to uh, detect, but uh, there is some, um, uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, millisecond is too, maybe, maybe too short. 
to be uh, resolved clearly in the experiment, but uh, we, okay. we, we have some uh, small, where's my pointer? Okay, small increase uh, right before full transition. But uh, yeah, it's, I don't know. Millisecond is too short, I guess, to be. Uh, okay, okay, uh, thanks. Resolved. Yeah. Okay, next customer is Zeyu, please. Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you for, for the very interesting talk. Uh, yeah, I, I'm particularly interested in the last slide you showed about the phase B uh, phase that you didn't show a, a decrease in the uh, result complexity. And But uh, if I heard it correctly, you said the, uh, the, uh, the bicoherence is increased. So do you have ever any measurement at about where the coherence is increased, like uh, still at the pedestal top, or uh, it's a, uh, uh, something like the pedestal peak gradient region. Uh, okay. I mean, uh, for the phase B, yeah. For, for the phase B? Mm -hmm. Yeah. For the phase B, uh, we could not see uh, significant bicoherence. So there's no uh, significant bicoherence for the phase B. Significant bicoherence was observed in the phase A. Oh, I see. With a reduction of rescaled complexity. Uh -huh. So this uh, previous uh, story is, is, uh, uh, is consistent for the phase A, but the phase for the phase B uh, near the pedestal top, we could not see any uh, change of uh, bicoherence or rescaled complexity. Clear change. We could not see any clear change. So I I wonder if uh, uh, far edge uh, pedestal foot transport may be different in the phase B and that, that can be responsible for the LM suppression in the phase B. But uh, ECI diagnostic uh, uh, measurement cannot be uh, properly uh, interpreted for the pedestal foot reason due to the, this optical thickness issue for the ECI diagnostics. And uh, we might need to analyze um, particle flux uh, as, what, as I did for this experiment. So we might need to analyze the particle flux near the striking point to assess the far edge transport. But uh, this requires some pro plasma control to take the data uh, near the striking point. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you may need an additional experiment to check the check if the fire to transport is very different between two phases. Right. Yeah, it, it will be very interesting to know what happens in phase B. Thank yes, you. I agree. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I had a, a comment really and a question, uh, actually several, but we, have, we still have a line here. Uh, sort of continuing where we were with Youngjin, you know, okay. what, what we've really got here is is not turbul is not chaos and noise, but really two different levels of chaos, right? The stochastic field is chaotic. It has a positive Lyapunov exponent, right? Just dust off the stand, you know, the standard map or any other model you want to play with and you or the equations for field lines. And the turbulence is surely, I mean, it has many, the, you know, it has several po uh, positive Lyapunov exponents. I mean, that it's somewhat how many it's got is related to the strength of the turbulence, but that's a soft question. So really what we've got here is, is a fight between two different chaotic systems, if you mm -hmm. see what I mean. And one, the two are competing against each other. And it would be interesting, you know, why do you think of one as the noise and one as the chaos when in fact they're both chaotic? I mean, what I would love to have if this were a computer simulation is to have a, 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 compar a direct measurement of Lyapunov exponents. 
for both the field lines and the particle orbits, which you can in principle do. By the way, that might be an interesting thing for simulations to do at some point and see in some sense, which is the stronger or more chaotic process to put this in, you know, in some context. I wonder if you have any comment on that. Your, your question is about how uh, turbulence, uh, how should we, how turbulence would it, uh, change with a, uh, with well, a circus field? I'm sort of asking, well, I mean, that's, of course, a, a question of great interest, but I'm saying we're, we, you te we tend to think of this really as the, as the stochastic field is in some sense, you know, a suppressing effect and the turbulence is, is going against it. But in fact, the two, the two are just different degrees of chaos. One is a right, one is externally driven, one is arriving spontaneously. Well, um, I'm, I'm, I, I, I think I, I need to more think about it. Uh, yeah, to answer. So do I. L let me ask though an easier question. I mean, for, for systems, you know, there are. There are other ways of playing these information theory games. And one thing that's often hauled out is the idea of computing the dimension of the attractor, so-called information dimension calculation, which uh -huh. by the way uh -huh. is related to Lyapunov exponents. And this usually works, by the way, when the dimension is not too large. So it doesn't always work for strong turbulence, but it might work here. So I'm curious, have you tried to do something like that to compute the information dimension of the, uh, and the change in the information dimension of the turbulence with the stochastic field? In other words, does the stochastic field reduce the dimension of the attractor for the turbulent state? Well, I, I have not uh, calculated uh, this dimension uh, analysis. I tried to calculate some uh, <clears throat> some uh, Lyapunov exponent uh, estimation, and uh, uh, let me give you some. Here, uh, my uh, uh, my uh, rescaled complex analysis analysis is more sensitive to the high frequency component, mm -hmm. and uh, I told you before the bicoherence was uh, localized near the, uh, around the, where is it? Uh, low frequency component. And uh, I calculate the Lyapunov exponent, but there are some parameters to uh, be determined to, uh, so we can uh, estimate, we can, uh, Estimate the Ryapunov. I could estimate a Ryapunov exponent for the low frequency component only, due to the uh, some limitation on the parameters. And uh, when I calculate the Ryapunov exponent for this plasma, and this result, uh, this provides an increase of a Ryapunov exponent for the uh, LM suppression phase, which is due to the strongly uh, uh, increase the bicoherence. So this coupling, uh, three wave coupling resulted in the, uh, in some sense, chaotic uh, fluctuation for mm -hmm. the low frequency component. But the, what I show you here by the rescaled complexity is the characteristics of a higher frequency component. And that is uh, more, according to this analysis, uh, that is more, uh, uh, that becomes more stochastic. So mm -hmm. I, I, I suspect that the, the effects of a stochastic field or, or chaotic field uh, is to make uh, the uh, high K fluctuations more uh, stochastic or more random. And that we should consider some effects of a uh, diffusivity or some things. So I think that turbulence would not directly uh, reflect the structure of a stochastic 
chaotic or stochastic field or whatever, but uh, its behavior becomes more random by the interaction with the stochastic field. So for the high frequency component, but the low frequency component here by the existence of nonlinear coupling with the low K island probably, this behavior, their behavior is uh, dominated by this nonlinear coupling and their behavior is more chaotic in some sense. And that information is not captured in this, this scaled complexity because of difference in the frequency space. Mm -hmm. Selective so sensitivity to in the super frequency space. So it seems like the high frequency components sort of behave as one might guess, but okay, that's interesting. Yes, right, yeah. yeah. All right, I, we have, still have a line. So Zihang, please. Thank you. So my question is about uh, your connection between um, particle flux and analysis based on data PE. Um, I would think that the uh, more relevant signal for particle flux would be the density fluctuation. So I wonder um, if you look at the um, effect of the IMP on the complexity of the density fluctuation data, would you see similar trend as the uh, data TE data? So near, near the pedestal top or near the uh, particular pedestal top, right? Uh, you, near the you're pedestal sure. top. Right. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we might have uh, some uh, BS data, which measures density fluctuation. And uh, I, I need to survey some, uh, search for some data for the analysis. Yes. I think that would be also interesting. Presumably, the uh, density fluctu fluctuation would be less sensitive to the uh, stochastic field than the uh, uh, temperature uh, fluctuation, uh -huh. right? Uh, for two reasons. One is just because fast electron respond more um, sensitivity to those uh, uh, field lines, um, directions, as uh, reaches as the Rosen blue mechanism. Another constraint is the uh, quasi neutrality condition that the ion would try to hold back the electron. So you would not expect that uh, uh, electron uh, particle flux would be uh, significantly affected uh, similar to the uh, heat flux. Okay. I don't, I don't get it well, but what, what was your question? Did, did you ask a question or just comment? Uh, kind of, I guess both, right? What do you expect for the uh, density fluctuation? Uh, well, what I want to expect for density fluctuation. Well, I, I think I have to, uh, I, I think I can comment after I do some analysis. I know. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, next customer, Wei Xin. Okay, uh, actually I have a, a question following uh, Professor Lin. Yeah, uh -huh. uh, considering uh, the uh, particle flux and tem temper electron temperature of fluctuations, I'm wondering whether you observe the, uh, elect the change of electric field due to the stochastic uh, uh, magnetic field, I mean, the ER change. Uh, ch change of ER? Yes. During this experiment? Uh -huh. Well, I, I, uh, I didn't attempt to analyze uh, <coughs> ER field because ER uh, estimation requires very good uh, pedestal profile diagnostics. We, we have some profile diagnostics and reliable diagnostics for the TI, but the problem is the Poroidal uh, velocity <clears throat> diagnostics, poroidal CES, and it, it is very difficult to obtain the a good poroidal profile diagnostics in near the pedestal. So this has this caused too much uncertainty in the pedestal ER estimation. As a Kiming uh, Hu, Dr. Hu already said for the case of uh, D3D, but it is not also. Uh, not easy to obtain a good estimation in case touch. So uh, I didn't attempt to <laughs> analyze uh, uh, here, okay. here. Yeah, here. Okay, thank you. I also have a naive yeah, yeah, question. Uh, yeah, how to uh, confirm uh, uh, an island is stochastic from uh, or partially, uh, partially uh, stochastic from experiment? 
So uh, I, it's, it's very difficult to confirm or, or, or say for confidence. I just uh, suggest based on these two uh, analyses, these two results uh, were somewhat contradictory at first, but uh, we think that they are very well correlated in time space. And so I think that a partially stochastic island can be answered for the, these two seemingly contradictory results. And the one, uh, and uh, yeah, this is like, a, yeah, can be a simple answer for these two behaviors. So we suggest that partially stochastic island, but uh, it's very difficult to uh, kind of confirm because I guess that to validate this, uh, a stochastic island uh, for sure we need a, a localized multi uh, measurement but uh, near the pedestal tab it, it do not be easy uh, i don't know if, <laughs> if it is possible in the near future okay thank you yeah all right next customer dr kwan who can either communicate by zoom or shout <laughs> down the hall to you <laughs> Thank you. Um, actually, my, my point is uh, more like comment, but also question to the Dominion or uh, Gyeongjin or uh, Pat. Um, so actually, Gyeongjin mentioned this uh, stochastic field as a kind of yet another form of actually chaos with deterministic process. So two different kind of degrees of the chaos, chaos acting on this uh, the, 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 the measured signal, but I, 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 uh, I'd like to, but also uh, uh, raise this point that uh, the CCI measurement or practical measurement always has some limited time or spatial resolution. So it has kind of interest, introduced intrinsic kind of coarse graining on the measured process. So uh, with some two different chaotic process with different spatial temporal scales with this intrinsic uh, coarse graining, one might look uh, chaotic, but yet another might look like uh, stochastic, I, I think. And my question is, um, um, what kind of relevant time scales uh, are you supposing? I, I, I think in, in this uh, measurement and analysis, I think several time scales are involved. One is uh, yeah, kind of stochastic background, and the other one is uh, kind of turbulent signal, and uh, the, the other but the most important one is a kind of measurement uh, time scale. So uh, I wonder how well those are separated and uh, what is the order of time scales are you thinking? Well, um, so, so this analysis or every analysis analysis is sensitive to the parameters I mean, of time scale or spatial scale. Mm -hmm. And uh, for this analysis, I uh, choose based on the size of VCI channels and uh, uh, refrain phase velocity of these uh, turbulence structures. So size of our, our so size of VCI channel is a re response uh, area is about a few centimeter, and uh, this uh, structures is passing through the ECI channel by a, a few kilometer per second. So I choose the ten microsecond for the uh, time of interest for this analysis. And that result that limit or resulted in the selective response of this analysis for the higher frequency. And uh, uh, I think uh, we have to consider the time scale of uh, interesting physics uh, for better uh, uh, better time scale. But th this is uh, restricted by the diagnostic uh, limitation. And uh, I hope that we can. Uh, <clears throat> determine the time of interest based on more physics and hope that that time scale is, uh, uh, can be within the limitation of diagnostics, but uh, I'm not sure yet. Yes, and uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, any further questions or comments? We had several people, I think still we have no hands, but people had, I think, further things they wanted to bring up. So now, now is your chance. Ah, Gyeongjin is back. 
All right, go ahead. Oh yeah, uh, I still have one more question. So uh, does the high complexity value means uh, the distance from, I mean, uh, does it mean it's far, the turbulence is far from Gaussian? Gaussian noise or? Uh, yeah, Gaussian, Gaussian fluctuation. Noise? Yeah, yeah, or Brownian It's not noise, it's yeah. fluctuation, but anyway, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah I know, yeah. yeah. Right, so, so higher value to the positive value means that it's statistical behavior is different from a uh, fraction of Brownian motion or Gaussian. Uh, and the negative value is uh, somewhat, uh, somewhat is, is uh, well not well defined, but uh, they just uh, <clears throat> divide this uh, area by two, chaotic or stochastic, mm. based on uh, this uh, Brownian motion uh, model. So can you say that uh, the turbulence is strong uh, if we have high this high value? Well, I, I showed you some uh, example from the, this natural allen free case. There is no external external correlation, and uh, this plus this turbulence developed to have a, a complexity pattern. You can see that uh, scaled complexity is increased for the this measurement. So, yeah. So, without external correlation, uh, T pattern seems to be complex or chaotic. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, and next customer, uh, Guan Yang Yu. Oh, thank you for the talk, it's very interesting. Uh, so I have more like a fundamental question. Okay. Um, you show bicoherence plot for the uh, for, uh, for locate turbulence. So uh, my question is, how is the uh, island by, being by Bico by coherence between locate turbulence. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah. That's how, a lot. Okay. Mm -hmm. How what? How a uh, static RMP island will increase the by coherence of locate turbulence. Oh, so uh, I think that <clears throat> one possible mechanism is a uh, nonlinear uh, resonance. So this will uh, suggest that. For the island uh, satisfying this condition, it can emit the uh, uh, drift wave nonlinearly, and uh, it it is basically uh, this is coupling between the structure of island and the uh, structure of a uh, drift wave. They are specially coupled, coupled, and then I think this can increase some uh, uh, coupling, uh, three wave coupling. This can result in some three wave couplings. So is, is yeah. the island here at zero frequency? Yeah, near zero, I think. Yes, because uh, they uh, <clears throat> RMP island. reported near the, uh, yeah, this, this, this induced by RMP static field, static field. So this would be near zero. And uh, for the LM suppression, they, within some uncertainty, they found the electric drift to frequency near zero. So this condition may be, might be satisfied and mm -hmm. this is larger than zero, so smaller, smaller than zero. Anyway, so this amplitude is larger than uh, zero, so this condition can be also may, might be satisfied in the RMPLM suppression experiment. And then this implies that the nonlinear drive, turbulence drive after the field penetration may be important for the suppression. Okay, okay, thank you. I'll, I'll read the paper. Thank you, Marimar. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Any. Any further comments or questions? I can't resist one more on a subject particular that comes comes to mind with some of the the members of the audience present, which is have you you know there's of course the other little problem of the RMP is the LH transition with it. And have you, I mean, we talked about this once, I recall, but is it, it, have you any plans to try to apply this type of analysis techniques to the transition dynamics? I think would be yeah, extremely I, I, interesting there. Yeah, I would love to. And uh, as I told you, uh, this uh, 
uh, RC, risk scale complex analysis is uh, more sensitive to the higher frequency. Of course, we can uh, adjust the parameter to be more sensitive to the other frequency component anyway. Uh, we have to be a little bit careful that uh, during the, <clears throat> this is a, in, in, the, in the, before the transition in the N mode plasmas, the, the fluctuation opens to be too low, I guess. I, I have to check it, but I don't know if we can uh, correctly apply this method or not, but I, I think I, I would like to, uh, I'd like to, yeah, look at more carefully mm -hmm. and try to analyze the, the turbulence behavior during the LH transition. But uh, I, I recall another result. I did some analysis, turbulence analysis near the pedestal during the LH transition. And I often found the dual mode. I mean, the multiple uh, phase velocity mode at the single point. And uh, this can be a little bit uh, 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 com confusing. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, can, can be a little bit, can be a little com complicate the result, but anyway, uh, it would, it would be interesting to analyze. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything further? Well, I think uh, since we've we've almost doubled the time, we should thank our speaker again for a very interesting talk and a very uh, dynamic discussion, and which was really great. So thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. thank you very much for this opportunity and thank you for all the questions and discussions. All right. Okay, everybody, I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for a very nice time. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you.